I showed my rebellious sister the reality of homelessness to teach her a lesson. Years later, she stole our mom's car and ran away with her criminal boyfriend. Now she's in jail. I, 28F, am at my wit's end with my younger sister, Carol, 20F. Our family dynamic has always been complicated, but things have really spiraled out of control lately. To give some context, I'm the oldest of three kids. There's me, our brother Andrew, 25NM, and Carol. Growing up, our parents were loving but strict. Dad worked long hours as a construction foreman while mom juggled part-time jobs and taking care of us kids. From a young age, Carol was always the rebellious one. While Andrew and I were generally well-behaved, Carol seemed to take pleasure in pushing boundaries. It started with small things, refusing to eat her vegetables, throwing tantrums in public, that sort of thing. But as she got older, her behavior became more problematic. I remember when Carol was around 10, she went through a phase of compulsive lying. She'd make up elaborate stories about things that never happened, like claiming she'd won awards at school, or that she'd been invited to sleepovers that didn't exist. It drove our parents crazy trying to figure out what was true and what wasn't. As a teenager, Carol's rebellious streak really kicked into high gear. She started hanging out with a rough crowd, staying out past curfew, and talking back to our parents constantly. I was away at college by then, but I'd hear stories from Andrew about the screaming matches between Carol and our parents. Things really came to a head when Carol was 16. She got suspended from school multiple times for fighting and disruptive behavior. The final straw was when she physically attacked our mom during an argument about her grades. Carol had always had a hot temper, but this was the first time she'd gotten physically violent. Dad kicked her out of the house after that, telling her she wasn't welcome back until she got her act together. It was a hugely traumatic event for our family. Mom was devastated, crying for days. Andrew was angry and confused. I felt guilty for not being there, wondering if I could have prevented things from escalating so far if I'd been around more. Carol bounced around between friends' houses for a while after that. We'd hear snippets about her whereabouts from mutual acquaintances, but she barely kept in touch with the family. Eventually, about two months after the blow up with our parents, she showed up on my doorstep. I was living in a small apartment in the city at the time, working my first job out of college. When I opened the door and saw Carol standing there, looking thin and tired, my heart broke a little. She claimed our parents had kicked her out for no reason and that mom had been the one to get physical with her. I was skeptical. I knew Carol had been acting out, but I also knew she had a tendency to twist the truth. I let Carol in and gave her some food while I tried to figure out what to do. Part of me wanted to just call our parents right away, but I was worried Carol would bolt if I did. So I waited until she fell asleep on my couch, then snuck into my bedroom to make the call. Our parents confirmed what I suspected. Carol had been the aggressor and they truly felt unsafe having her in the house anymore. But they were clearly worried sick about her. Mom was in tears on the phone, begging me to convince Carol to come home and get help. I've always had a soft spot for my little sister, despite all the trouble she's caused so I agreed to let her stay with me for a bit while things cooled down. I hoped that maybe being away from our parents and the negative influences in her hometown would give Carol a chance to reflect and make some changes. The first night went okay. Carol was on her best behavior and we had a nice dinner together. We talked about neutral topics, my job, her favorite TV shows, funny stories from when we were kids. For a moment, it felt like old times before everything went wrong. I went to bed feeling hopeful that maybe this was the turning point Carol needed. Boy, was I wrong. The next morning, I got up at my usual time, around 7 a.m. to get ready for work. I tried to be quiet, but my apartment has thin walls. Around 11.30, Carol finally emerged from the guest room looking like death warmed over. She immediately started snapping at me for being too loud in the morning. She demanded I keep it down from now on so she could sleep in. I was taken aback by her attitude. I calmly explained that I had to stick to my normal routine for work, but I'd try to be more quiet in the future. Carol just rolled her eyes and stomped back to the guest room, slamming the door behind her. Things only got worse from there. That evening when I got home from work, Carol tried to go out with some local friends she'd apparently contacted. I told her that wasn't happening. She's too young to be out alone at night in the city, especially when I don't know who these friends are. Carol flew into a rage, screaming that I couldn't tell her what to do and that I was just as bad as our parents. After she calmed down a bit, Carol handed me a list of house rules she had written up. It included things like no music before noon, no vegetables for dinner, and no asking where I'm going or who I'm with. I was absolutely floored by her audacity. This was my apartment that I was letting her stay in out of the goodness of my heart, and she was trying to dictate rules to me? That was the last straw for me. I realized Carol hadn't learned anything from being kicked out. She still thought she could do whatever she wanted with no consequences. I knew I had to do something drastic to try to get through to her. I grabbed my keys and told Carol to get in the car. She looked confused, but must have sensed from my tone that I wasn't messing around. We drove in tense silence for about 15 minutes until we reached the rougher part of downtown. I parked in front of a homeless shelter where there was a long line of people waiting for food and beds. This is where you'll end up if you don't straighten out your attitude, I told Carol bluntly, 
Living on the streets isn't a game. These people don't have anyone to bail them out or give them second chances. Is this really the life you want for yourself? Carol stared out the window, looking shaken. I could see tears forming in her eyes. For several minutes, neither of us said anything. Finally, Carol whispered, I don't want to end up like that. I softened my tone a bit and said, you don't have to, but you need to make some serious changes. If you want to keep staying with me, you need to follow my rules and call mom to apologize. Otherwise, I'll drop you off right here at the shelter. It's your choice. To my surprise, Carol agreed without argument. When we got home, she immediately called mom and gave what seemed like a genuine apology. She asked to stay with me a bit longer and mom agreed, though I could hear the hesitation in her voice. Carol ended up staying with me for about a week before going back home. During that time, she was much more respectful and actually helped out around the apartment without being asked. We had some good conversations about her future goals and what she needed to do to get back on track. It's been a few months since then, and Carol seems to have done a complete 180. No more suspensions or fights at school. Her grades are up and she even joined the dance team. Our parents say her attitude at home has greatly improved too. She's talking about applying to community college next year. I'm proud of the progress Carol has made, but I can't help wondering if I did the right thing. Was I too harsh in my tough love approach? Should I have handled things differently? Part of me worries that this turnaround is too good to be true and that the other shoe is going to drop eventually. I'd appreciate any insights or advice on how to support Carol going forward while also protecting myself emotionally if things go south again. Update one. It's been about six months since my original post and I wanted to give an update on the situation with my sister Carol. I wish I had better news to share, but unfortunately, things have taken a drastic turn for the worse. For a while, it really seemed like Carol had turned a corner. Her behavior and grades at school continued to improve. She was getting along better with our parents and seemed to be making healthier friendship choices. She even started volunteering at an animal shelter on weekends, which she seemed to really enjoy. I started to feel like maybe my tough love approach had actually worked and Carol was on the path to a brighter future. However, about two months ago, things began to unravel. It started small at first. Carol missing curfew a few times, getting snippy with our parents over minor things. I chalked it up to normal teenage mood swings and figured it would pass. But then things escalated quickly. One night, Carol got into a huge fight with our parents. From what I understand, they caught her sneaking out to meet up with her new boyfriend, Jake, 19M. Apparently, Jake has a bit of a criminal record, mostly petty theft and drug possession charges. Our parents were understandably concerned and told Carol she wasn't allowed to see him anymore. Carol showed up at my door again in the middle of the night, crying and asking to stay with me. Against my better judgment, I let her in. She swore up and down that Jake was really a good guy who was trying to turn his life around. She said our parents were being unfair and judgmental and that Jake understood her in a way no one else did. I let Carol stay with me for a few days while things cooled down. During that time, I tried to talk to her about making good choices and the importance of finishing school. I reminded her of how far she'd come and how proud we all were of her progress. She seemed receptive, but I could tell she was still angry at our parents and determined to keep seeing Jake. When Carol went back home, things were tense but stable for a few weeks. Then last weekend, all hell broke loose. Carol stole our mom's car and credit card and took off with Jake. They were gone for three days before the police finally caught up with them two states over. It turns out they'd gone on a drug-fueled joyride, maxing out mom's credit card on hotel rooms, clothes, and who knows what else. When the cops found them, there were drugs in the car. Jake already had warrants out for his arrest, so he's back in jail now. Our parents are absolutely livid. They're pressing charges for the car theft and credit card fraud. Carol is facing potential jail time herself now. She's back home for now, but on very thin ice. Mom and dad have taken away her phone, her laptop, everything. She's basically under house arrest except for school. I'm honestly at a loss. I thought we had made so much progress, but now it feels like we're back at square one or even worse. Carol seems to have fallen back into all her old patterns, lying, manipulating, lashing out at anyone who tries to help her. She's still obsessed with Jake, talking about how she'll wait for him and they'll be together when he gets out of jail. I've tried talking to Carol, but it's like hitting a brick wall. She's convinced that everyone is against her and Jake, that we just don't understand their love. She says she'd rather be homeless than live under our parents' rules. I'm terrified she's going to run away again and end up in an even worse situation. Part of me wants to try another tough love intervention, but I'm not sure it would work this time. Carol seems determined to self-destruct and I don't know how to help her anymore. I'm also worried about the toll this is taking on our parents and our brother, Andrew. Mom is a nervous wreck, jumping every time the phone rings. Dad has thrown himself into work, barely speaking when he's home. Andrew is angry at Carol for putting the family through this again. I'm torn between wanting to support my sister and feeling like I need to protect myself from her drama. I love Carol, but I'm starting to wonder if there's a point where I need to step back from my own mental health. The constant crisis and chaos is affecting my work and my relationships. My boyfriend has been incredibly patient, but I can tell he's getting frustrated with how much time and energy I'm spending on Carol's problems. I don't know what the right move is here. 
Do I keep trying to get through to Carol? Do I support our parents in taking a hard line with her? Do I distance myself from the situation? Any advice on how to handle this would be greatly appreciated. I feel like I'm drowning and I don't know which way to swim. Update two. It's been about three months since my last update, and unfortunately, things have only gotten worse with Carol. The fallout from her joyride with Jake has been severe, to say the least. Carol ended up taking a plea deal for the car theft and credit card fraud charges. She got six months in county jail plus two years probation. Her parents refused to bail her out or hire a private attorney, feeling like she needed to face real consequences this time. I know it broke their hearts to do it, but I think they felt like they had no other choice. The past few months have been a roller coaster of emotions for our family. Watching Carol get led away in handcuffs was one of the hardest things I've ever experienced. Mom cried for days. Dad threw himself into work even more, barely speaking to any of us. Andrew has been angry and distant, saying he's done with Carol's drama. I tried to visit Carol in jail as much as I could, but it was difficult. She was alternately angry and despondent, blaming everyone but herself for her situation. She talked constantly about Jake, convinced that they would reunite when she got out and everything would be perfect. No matter how much I tried to reason with her, she wouldn't listen. Carol just got out of jail last week. She's living at home again because it's a condition of her probation, but things are incredibly tense. Our parents have laid down extremely strict rules. No phone, no internet except for schoolwork, no going out except for school and mandatory counseling sessions. Carol is basically under 24 seven supervision. I've tried to be supportive and encourage Carol to stick with the program. I even offered to let her come stay with me again once she's off probation, if she can prove she's turned things around. But she's not receptive at all. It's like talking to a brick wall. Carol is constantly fighting with our parents. She says they're treating her like a prisoner in her own home. She's threatened to run away multiple times. I'm worried she's going to violate her probation and end up back in jail. She seems to have no concept of the seriousness of her situation. The worst part is Carol is still completely hung up on Jake. He's currently in prison himself on drug charges, looking at several years inside. But Carol talks about waiting for him and how they'll be together when he gets out. It's like she's living in a fantasy world where none of her actions have consequences. I'm starting to wonder if there's any hope left for my sister. She's an adult now, technically, but she's acting like a rebellious teenager with no regard for how her behavior affects others. She seems incapable of taking responsibility for her actions or thinking about her future in any realistic way. Part of me wants to just wash my hands of the whole situation. I'm exhausted from the constant drama and stress. My own life has been on hold for months as I've tried to help Carol and support our parents. My boyfriend has been incredibly patient, but I can tell he's reaching his limit. But Carol is still my little sister. I remember the sweet, funny little girl she used to be before all this started. I can't help but hope that girl is still in there somewhere, buried under all the anger and bad decisions. I don't know if I have it in me to keep trying to reach her, but I also don't know if I can live with myself if I give up. I'm at a complete loss for what to do next. Any advice or insights would be greatly appreciated. How do you help someone who doesn't want to be helped? Is there a point where you have to step back and let them hit rock bottom? I feel like I'm watching my sister destroy her life in slow motion and I'm powerless to stop it. Update three. It's been about two months since my last update. I wish I had better news to share, but things with Carol have hit rock bottom. Last month, Carol violated her probation by cutting off her ankle monitor and running away. She was gone for almost three weeks before the police caught up with her. We were all sick with worry the entire time, imagining the worst possible scenarios. When they finally found Carol, it turns out she'd been staying with Jake's sister in a rundown apartment across state lines. She'd been using drugs heavily the entire time she was gone. The police found her passed out on a dirty mattress, barely coherent. Carol is back in jail now, this time for at least a year. She's facing additional charges for violating probation and drug possession. The judge wasn't lenient this time, given her history. Our parents are devastated. Mom can barely get out of bed most days. Dad is talking about early retirement so they can move away and get a fresh start. They've told Carol that this is her last chance. If she doesn't turn things around after the stint in jail, they're done trying to help her. Andrew has completely washed his hands of the situation. He's blocked Carol's number and says he doesn't wanna hear anything about her anymore. I understand his feelings, but it breaks my heart to see our family fractured like this. I'm struggling with my own feelings about the situation. On one hand, Carol is my sister and I love her. I remember the good times we had growing up before things went so wrong. Part of me still hopes that the sweet little girl I knew is in there somewhere. But on the other hand, I'm angry and hurt by her repeated poor choices. I'm tired of the drama and stress she brings into all our lives. Every time I think she's hit rock bottom, she finds a way to sink even lower. It's like she's determined to destroy herself and doesn't care who she hurts in the process. I've decided to take a step back for my own mental health. I'm not going to visit Carol in jail or put money on her books this time. I've told our parents I support whatever decisions they make regarding Carol going forward, but I can't be as involved as I was before. The constant crisis and chaos was starting to affect my work and my relationship with my boyfriend. I need to focus on my own life for a while.
It breaks my heart to see my little sister throwing her life away like this. I keep wondering if there was something more I could have done, some way I could have reached her before things got this bad. But I've realized I can't save Carol from herself. She has to want to change, and right now it doesn't seem like she does. All I can do now is hope that someday Carol will decide to make real changes in her life. Maybe this time in jail will be the wake-up call she needs. Or maybe she'll have to hit an even lower point before she's ready to turn things around. Either way, I can't put my life on hold waiting for it to happen. I'm trying to be there for our parents as much as I can. They're really struggling with feelings of guilt and failure. I keep reminding them that they did their best and Carol's choices are her own. I'm encouraging them to seek therapy or join a support group for parents of addicts. As for me, I'm focusing on rebuilding my own life. My boyfriend and I are talking about moving in together. I'm throwing myself into work and considering going back to school for an advanced degree. I'm trying to reconnect with friends I've neglected during all the drama with Carol. It's hard not to feel guilty about moving on with my life while Carol is in such a bad place. But I know I can't help her if I'm not in a good place myself. I have to trust that she'll find her way eventually, even if the path is longer and harder than any of us hoped. If anyone has been through a similar situation with a sibling or loved one, I'd appreciate any advice on how to cope with the guilt and grief. How do you find the balance between supporting someone and protecting yourself? Is there still hope for Carol, or do I need to accept that she may never change? Thanks for listening to my story and for any insights you can offer.